Today I'm working with the girls on parallel parking is probably one of the major things we're going to do, plus the 980 degree backup. It's their final lesson before they take their test uh, on Tuesday. They're really pretty good. Uh, their mom and dad have done a lot of work with them. They have to maneuver together, and one of the things that I noticed the first one, we first went out was they were cutting their left turns a little bit. <laughs> We have six hours of driving with an instructor. Um, we learned how uh, to parallel park and um, 90 degree parking and other things. No, right down here by the cars, between the two cars, we'll go we'll make it a little tougher. Mm -hmm. A little further. Right. Put it reverse, hard to the right, so you get to that 45 degree. But how do Abby and Brittany actually coordinate driving between the two of them? Abby takes over the pedals and the um, shifter, and I take over the and we both we both steer we both steer. And I take over the blinker and the lights. We gotta go where we're going, so we know where we're going. So we have to, we know what turns we to take. <sighs> this verifies the fact they've completed their six hours, which is required by the state, and then Abby pays so. Abigail? Yeah, this card, along with your permit, you'll need. Okay. This will be the first time conjoined twins have applied for a driver's license in Minnesota. And exactly how they will take the test and how many tests they will need to pass is still unknown. When it came to get their licensure, the big question I think in everybody's mind is, how are these girls going to drive? The state just asked me, is there any limitations that these girls would have? As the girls' physician since birth, Dr. Joy Westerdahl knows the twins' capabilities and physiology well. At 16, Abby and Brittany seem to be developing normally, but their yearly checkup is a time to keep track of any issues caused by their conjoinment. When an adolescent comes into the office, we're obviously making sure that they're fit for sports, they're fit for their activities at school, that they're able to engage in social behaviors. Those are not unique to the girls. However, because they have two hearts, lungs, circulatory systems that are conjoined, I'm looking to make sure they're not developing premature high blood pressure, respiratory problems. Okay, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. Haven't seen you in a while. Well, just like by next school, actually. Well, maybe. <laughs> I watched you drive in. How was your drive? Good. Good. The process of their ability to come together is fascinating for me as a, as a primary care doctor because above the waist they seem to function independently and yet they can clap even though one controls one arm and the other controls the other. I ask them periodically um, what they feel and sense. One girl cannot sense touching on the other girl's arm and vice versa. So you put her in the old court. In court. So, so. Then how'd that go for you? Uh, I thought it was good until you got satisfaction. Oh. Did, could you taste As Abby and Brittany grow into young adults, yeah. it's impossible not to wonder about their future. 
from questions about college and careers to deeper issues such as their health, future relationships. Could they become mothers? They do look good. I know. All right, Missy. Thank you. Thank you. So this isn't the ear that's bugging you? Um, both were, but... Yeah, they're a little waxy, but not... Nothing serious. Let's go look at the other one. This one right here. This is the one that's been bugging you.